Hello and welcome. This is Fireworks on TVC News. Everywhere you turn in political discourse today, it's the heart of the matter. It's the continuing rising insecurity across the land, which may have worsened in Ibarakpa or your state, despite efforts of the self-styled Yoruba activist Sunday Guhu to rid the area of criminal herders tormenting the people. There appears to be no let up, as reports say they are back in that part of the southwest and in neighboring Ogu State, killing, destroying farms, and threatening fire and brimstone when challenged. The northwestern part of the country, being one of the hotbeds of the violence, has also not known any respite, as a recent report of an attack on the quarters belonging to the Federal Airports Authority of Nigeria has led to the kidnap of a family of four, and as at the time of this broadcast, they had not been released. Amid the continuing violence, President Buhari gave the new service chiefs a few weeks ultimatum to secure the country. But this may not be reassuring, as there are now growing calls on Nigerians to secure themselves, or arm themselves rather, in self-defense. And so we ask, is this an invitation to anarchy or a practical safety tip in the face of the current realities? Welcome to Fireworks on TVC News. I am Bukola Samuel Wemimo. Let's take a break. We'll be right back. Thank you for finding time to join us on today's edition of the program. My guest today is Professor Usman Yusuf. Professor Usman Yusuf is a professor of oncology, hematology, and bone marrow transplantation. And in recent times, uh, a commentator on national issues will it rather be referred to as a concerned citizen. Welcome, Professor Usman Yusuf Thank to you. Fireworks. Thank you for having me. Yes, Nicola. we're glad to have you. Thank you for having me. So um, you wrote a paper recently recommending that communities should be mobilized and empowered to protect themselves. Tell us exactly what informed this okay. and what form it would take, really. Good. So this is uh, it's an old paper. I don't know how long ago it was. A couple of months ago. And my visit to the forest has changed all of that. As at the time I wrote the paper, the reason I wrote the paper at that time was, of course, the continuing violence all over the northwest. It hasn't stopped, by the on way. On the northeast, coming on the northeast and the north central. And I'm from Kazina, so I'm speaking first hand. Eleven out of our thirty-four local governments are under siege by bandits. Kazina, our capital city, is filling up as an IDP camp. I've had friends and family members that have been victims. So when I speak, I'm speaking first hand. It's not abstract. The library or in the comfort of my office. Good. At that time. Now, our children, 344 Angara school kids were carted into the forest, just like cattle. So any human being that sees this continuing insecurity without let up, you are bound to say, how can communities be empowered to protect themselves? Because, and this is a fact, we do not have enough armed forces to, to, to protect us. We do not have enough police to protect us. We know that. This is a fact of life. So people need to be empowered to protect themselves then. And I gave an analogy that during the British, uh, during the World War, the British had home guard. Home guard that people that were too young to go to war or old enough, too old to go to war, they were mobilized as home guard to protect the home front. So I said at that time that communities need to be empowered to defend themselves. And then we needed to have forest rangers. This was my view then, before I... You have an epiphany now. Absolutely. Based on facts that I saw. We'll talk about that later. Let's have the epiphany. Good, good, good. <laughs> so before I, before I went to the forest, I mean, so I followed Sheikh uh, Gumi to all the five states we went to. We went to Kaduna, we went to Zamfara, we went to Kebi, Sokoto, and Niger. Zamfara is the epicenter of, of, of banditry. I and Shegumi went 
go a long way. 45 years medical school, 1976. So I know him very well. And I know how passionately he feels for this country. And I know how pained he is, all of us are, about the state of insecurity in this country. So when he invited me to come to Zamfara with him, why did he go? Nobody asked him to go. No government sent him to go there. He wasn't there on behalf of anybody. Nobody sponsored him. He wasn't there to preach any sect of Islam, or he wasn't there to negotiate and say government will do this or anybody will do this. The reason he went is simple, to listen. Martin Luther King Jr. said, violence is the language of the unheard. You don't hear people, they're killing them. Sit down, let's talk. He went to listen, to listen to their grievances, and preach the word of God to them and tell them there's no scripture. That first of all, they are Fulanis, we are Fulanis. They are our flesh and blood that we will not deny. What we are about is we are not proud of them. We are ashamed of them. There's nowhere in our scripture that supports, or any scripture that supports what they are doing. The killing, the raping, the banditry, the raising of villages, the bloodletting all across the land. Whatever their grievances, they may be facts, but not excuses for what they are doing. So he went to listen, because all the years he's been in the mosque, even before this banditry started, he used to preach that 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 clerics need to go to the villages, need to go to the need to go to the settlements of the Fulanis and preach the word of God to them. That they remain in the cities just like we all remain in the cities, talking to ourselves. We don't know what they are what they're about. They don't know what we are about. So we went to these five states. He invited me to come to Zamfara with him. Zamfara to me is near and dear because that's where I spent my formative years in secondary school. And for Sheikh Gumi, that is his ancestral home. Gumi is in Zamfara State. That is the epicenter. So when he goes, and we'll talk about all of this, all of these states are different. So when people talk about banditry, let's do the. No, every settlement is different. Every state is different. He would sit and hear them out. They will tell all their grievances, and they told us even before, they would not have gathered if it wasn't a cleric. They'd never seen Sheikh Gumi, they'd never had his sermons. But they say they have no grouse, no quarrel with any cleric. And that was why they gathered. And in all the five places, five states we went to, they gathered for us in force. They would say their grievances, all of them. Before then, there would be prayers and recitation of the Quran, and they will say all their grievances, all. And then he would stand up and uh, preach to them in the sternest of voices that we are not proud of them. We are not going to deny them they are flesh and blood. The people are saying, oh, they are felonies from the sky. They're, no, they are our flesh and blood that we will own. And only if you own that are you going to be able to do the right thing. He will preach to them. No scripture accepts what you do. We are ashamed of you. We are here to listen. We are not here to say government will do this for you or do that for you. Just like we come to you and hear you, we go back to government. But before we go into the forest, he would meet the emirs of each, any of the town he goes to. He would meet the clerics. He would meet the Fulani leaders. He would meet the townspeople. He would meet the local government people. Hear them. So you were, we present, you were present in all these yes. meetings? Yes, I didn't go to Kaduna, but we went to Zamfara. Zamfara, we spent a week. We spent a week Zamfara, we went to Sokoto, we, we then went to Kebi, and then back we went to Niger. I was in the entourage. Yes. So, so this tour gave you a new awakening? Absolutely. So what's this new awakening? The new awakening is this. That uh, there's this, this famous Chinese general that tells that says uh, the first the first uh, the first lesson in any war is to know your enemy. Mm. We don't know we know nothing. We don't know the people that are fighting us. We don't know who we are fighting. Okay, so now you know them. What should be the next line sure. of action? Now we know them. This is what I realize that this. 
conflict is a social problem, not a military problem. We're throwing a bomb, a million dollar bomb, on the people where women and children drink from the same pond where their cattle drink. All problems are local. Solutions are local, not from Abuja or Lagos or Washington, D.C. They've never for once told us what grouse they have with the federal government. Their problems and grouses are local. Mm. So we're here in Abuja throwing things, talking on TVC, talking on channels. Da -da 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 -da. When I came back, I stopped watching TV. So maybe what's your, what's your, what's maybe your I watch Maybe I'll watch what's your program your, when it your, airs. What's your recommendation, <laughs> Professor Smith? No, I'm, I'm, I'm serious. The, the real recommendation is this is, there is a place for the military, but this is essentially a social problem. So you're saying government should grant them amnesty? No, we, okay. So what is amnesty? So there is this talk about amnesty, people are all sweating. So if you look at the English dictionary, what is amnesty? Amnesty is essentially an act of forgiveness. Hear it. Hear so it. Especially. So bandits so, uh, should be forgiven. No, let me finish. So an act of forgiveness for past crimes, mostly political. And mm -hmm. that is granted for by the government. And when people start saying, oh, let's grant amnesty, oh, Niger Delta amnesty, oh, this amnesty, I tell people, people need to chill and understand what we are talking about. I'm not talking about amnesty. We are not there. Three hours. There must be reconciliation between communities. Fulanis have lived in this country for hundreds of years. And I live peacefully with local communities. Fulani's houses, Fulani's Nupes, Fulani's Guaris, Fulani's Igbos, Fulani's Yorubas. They have traversed this land for hundreds of years, long before Igboho and all the others. Long, long before. I lived peacefully. So what happened? That Fulani's are fighting each of these local communities. So you can grant all the amnesty you want if you do not have local reconciliation. That is first, reconciliation. That cannot be done by the federal government. It is local. It is the state government that need to reconcile societies. Wherever we went, Shagumi would listen to them. Come back into the towns and listen to the local folks. I'll give you an example. In Shinkapi, in Shinkapi the, the, the bandits were telling us Oh, they, they are not allowing us to go into the, the village, Shinkafi. Oh, they are not allowing our women to take milk in there, which we have lived with for generations. Why? And he came and asked the local government, the local government uh, administrator was there. So he asked him, what's the problem? He said, in presence of the bandits. He said, we gave them condition that they should not come into our village armed, number one. And if they go to the market, whatever they buy, they must pay. They were not doing like this. So the sheikh looked at the, the, the head of the bandits and said, this is th the right thing to do. This is what you guys have been doing. This is what your phobias have been doing and living with communities. You must do the right thing according to, uh, according to local norms of every community. If you do not reconcile communities, you can throw all the bomb you want. This fight will go on for hundreds of years. So the first R is reconciliation between communities. Number two, second R is reparations. Communities have been devastated on both sides. People have lost lives. People have lost businesses. Communities, uh, people that were, that were victims of all this conflict on all sides. We have to find a way to pay reparations. To and them. the third R? The third R is rehabilitation. You have to rehabilitate communities. We went to this camp, 13, 14, 15 year old ki kids carrying big guns. Guns they can hardly lift. Is this a short term or a long term no, solution? This is, you, want to, you want to douse this fire? The fire has been, has been on for a very long time. 
long before the civil so war. Is, is the injustices done to these people now is the result of the neglect of the past that we are reaping now. So is your theory, three R a, a short term or a long term solution? No, medium and sh short term you must have reconciliation, pay reparation and rehabilitate this, this, this all communities. And then there are ways, other ways that you need to find ways for Okay, so these since we don't know how long short term is, Prof, after Che Gumi's visit, more children have been kidnapped in Zamfara State. So his um, mission to preaching to the bandits have not particularly yielded results. I wouldn't say that. Let me tell you why. So when we went to and this is part of my education. I thought I've been to enough school in my life. I'm honestly, well, the more educated you are, the more humble you are of m what you do not know. By going into the forest and being at each of the meetings he holds when he comes back to town with everybody else tells me how much we do not know. Not only of the bandits out there in the forest, but our folks in the rural areas. We're here in Abuja talking to ourselves. So now I'm beginning to understand. What is my understanding? We went into we went into Niger to meet to meet uh, this this group of bandits from s five six states. They assembled, and then that was the day they abducted the the, the Kagara, Kagara kids. And then this happened again in Jangebe after we went. What I want people to realize is that there are people. So even re repentance has not started. No, no, we haven't even. So nobody, and we were not deluding ourselves, Bukhala, that one or two or three visits is the answer. So how many visits? Good, good. Um, what I'm how saying is how many visits will bring so, peace so the purpose to the northeast? You're, you're asking for a little too much patience. No, no, here, I'm, not, I'm not. I'm not. We have been. We have been fighting this for the last six years. Where have you been? And you probably fight it for the next 100 years if you don't do the right thing. So patience and everything is the right thing to do. While lives are being slaughtered, yeah, so when I'm there's killing and right, so ongoing. No, uh, good, good. Wives and, and we are, we are, being, are, good. are being raped. I agree. Uh, and the laws are being rendered, you know, husbandless, becoming widows good, in, their, good. in their prime. Bukala, that's why we, we, we all went into the struggle. I have a job as a doctor. Why am I involved in this? Because this is our responsibility. This is our this is our people, our region, our state, our country. This country, Nigeria, has given my generation more than we've given back. We're not going to fold our arm and say, oh, blame government. Our children and grandchildren will ask us, what did you do apart from blaming the government? But, but I'd security, like to, security I'd is like to everybody's... If you, if you want Nigerians to fold their arms and wait for bandits to repent, you're watching fireworks on TVC News. My guest today is Professor Usman Yusuf. He's a professor of oncology, hematology, and bone marrow transplantation. Professor Usman Yusuf has been to uh, the forests to see the bandits. He accompanied Sheikh Gumi, who is uh, conversing for some sort of soft landing for the bandits. We'll uh, ask him uh, more questions after this break. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Thank you for staying tuned to Fireworks. In today's edition, my guest is Professor Usman Yusuf, um, who is a concerned Nigerian, apart from being a professor of oncology, hematology, and bone marrow transplantation, and in recent times has been lending his voice to uh, the rising insecurity across the land. We have the benefit of picking the minds of bandits in the northeastern and northwestern part of the country, as Professor Yusuf uh, says he has visited the forests of Zamfara and some other parts of the Northwest alongside Sheikh Gumi. Thank you for holding on, Thank Professor you. Yusuf. Thank you. So, how long should Nigeria or Nigerians wait for the bandits to arrive at their own place of repentance before um, Nigeria can move forward, so to speak, if that captures the Good. Um, so let me correct what you said before the break. Uh, Shagumi wasn't looking for soft landing for anybody. 
He went to listen, to listen to both sides in every conflict in this world. But Shegumi hasn't particularly advocated punishment no, for and, and bandits. Good, and it's not for him too. And he made excuses for them in their killing good. spree. And, and it's, it's available no, in good, interviews. Okay, good, uh, it's not for him to advocate for punishment or repentance. There's nowhere, if you ask the Pope today to come into this conflict, the Pope will not tell you to continue open fire. There is a picture, there is an image of a nun. So you're towing, you're towing the line of Sheikh no, Gumi. I'm, 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 I'm I'd like you to be clear I am, I on am, how I am, you am, want okay, the bandits. Allow me, allow me, allow me, Bukola. I am old enough and, and fierce enough to defend myself. Okay. So whatever I say, I say it and I mean it. Good. Nobody has gone there to defend or advocate for anybody. We went there to listen. The bandits, and the people they are killing are our people. Boko Haram are our people. IPOP are our people. Igboho and all the people he's killing, they are our people. Right? So, it's time for elders. It's time for concerned citizens all across the six geopolitical zones to step up and contribute their quota. Um, I'm glad you mentioned... That was exactly... You mentioned IPOP because yeah. the, the resurgence of the self-determination cause of Biafra was quelled in a short time by this administration. So uh, while you continue to speak, speak with that knowledge in mind. L l let's continue. Good. And I'm not, I'm not the spokesman of this government. I hope you know that. I don't look like them. I'm speaking for myself and what we saw and the reason we went there to do that. Mm -hmm. All I'm saying, we live in this place. We stepped up to play our role in how can we how can we contribute to bringing peace in our land? I expect same of elders in the southwest, same of elders in the southeast, same of elders in the northeast. Elders in the northeast engage Boko Haram. Elders in the southeast engage IPOP. Elders in the south south engage those cultists. Engage in the s uh, elders in the southwest engage I uh, Igboho and all those people uh, uh, conducting xenophobic attacks. This is responsibility of responsible citizens. And that was our role. Is, is that what you call the, 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 the mission to liberating people who are suffering uh, the excesses of um, herders? Is that what you call their mission? Who is the mission? Xenophobic attacks? Absolutely. If that's you what, go, that's yeah, what you call yeah. it. If you, if you, what you said, what you, Bukala, said, oh, the Yoruba were, so you've already... So you've already ethnicized him. You never hear it us say, oh, the, the, we, we are, that's, let that's me finish. That's what you heard. No, no, that's what you said. And that is what I'm hearing. People need to be very careful when they start. The interpretation is what you heard. No, no, no. What I'm saying is that people need to be very careful what they do. This country is very fragile. Reason, so the reason you, you haven't categorically stated what your epiphany is after your visit My epiphany. To uh, the good, forest. Good. How should the bandits be dealt with now that you have gone to listen to them? Good. So, the reality is we don't know what we are fighting. They don't know us, we don't know them. You listen. Solutions are problems, are local solutions, are local. It's not a military solution. So, you, None. you don't, in this case, Prof, it's convenient. You don't want the law to take its course. That is the law. That is the law. The law everywhere in this world when there is conflict is dialogue. No, go and kill. But you in all those states, you, want, you would have rather that the governor allowed the law to take its yeah, course. Yeah, absolutely. This is the law. This is the law. What's what is the, the law? law? What, is, what are you asking me on door, on door to do? To go and kill them? Or Katsina State Governor to go and kill them all? No. Or to give an order anybody carrying AK-47 to go and shoot and kill? That's not the law. Mm. That is not the law. Mm. Do you agree you that the executive determines how the law should even play out? No, the executive does not determine. The executive follows the law. Follows the law. That, 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 they, that the legislature... So if the executive and if they, if issues they don't do an right. order on the police to ask Shea Gumi to lead um, forces into the forest and bring the bandits to book... Would you support that? Which executive issued that order? We I'm asking. No, we didn't. We let, don't let, need let's assume. You don't need any executive. Let me, let me give you an example. 
Do you know that President Obasanjo went and dialogued with Boko Haram during Jonathan? Do you know that President Jonathan, in 2013, set up a committee of dialogue with Boko Haram, the Turaki-led committee? They worked. And these are Boko Haram people that have done worse than anybody, and they didn't want dialogue. President Jonathan, they went all over. I have my friends on the, on the committee. They came and gave their recommendations to the government. The recommend, one of the recommendations is continue. We are here. The reason we went, we are tired of Professor bloodshed. Professor Yusuf, are we talking about the same group of people who have killed, who have raided, who have burnt houses, who have rendered many to become widows in their prime? Are we talking about the same people? The same people that have, have inflicted... Killed, yeah, the same who have people, inflicted sorrow right, on, no, the on same households. People, yeah, the same people that have... have caused endless good, sorrow, agony good, to same, many households. Good. The same people that have inflicted a lot more damage to my people than any people in the southwest, southeast or south, south. So let us tell our story. Let no one so tell you our want story. Let me finish. You would rather that... Let me, no, let me finish. That government dialogues with them. No. This is the reality. What do you want to do? You want to kill them? I'll give you an example. I'll ask again. No, I'll, I'll give you an example. I'll ask again, Go ahead, Professor ask. Yusuf. Yeah. If you were asked to lead security operatives to the forest where these bandits are, such that they can arrest them and bring them to book, would you do that? I would say good luck. It's not that they don't know. Everybody knows. If you want to know, you will know. If you want to know, you will know. It's not that they drop from the sky. It's not that it's not that Shegumi called anybody. So you wouldn't assist security operatives to bring criminals Why? Look, you are, to justice. You, are you, wouldn't as if you wouldn't provide the look, you required <laughs> assistance to bring <laughs> criminals to book. Bukala, you are saying as if I know where they live, as if security agents need me or the governors need no, me. No, you have as told if, us no, on let this me, program. Let me finish. Let me finish. That as you accompanied <laughs> Shegumi. Of course, visit I did. The bandits. Very proudly too. So you know, and the I will too. You probably know the route. To the forest. <laughs> you can find your way there if you had to go there again. And let me tell you, Bukala, let me, all the state governments we went to, including Nasr Erufai, that said, go kill them, go bomb them. They dialogued with them. All. And we that visited Zamfara, we saw the benefit of dialogue. In 2019, when this new government came to Zamfara, when there was a curfew in Guso, the capital city, 6 p.m., everybody was indoors. All the major highways after 6 p.m. empty. Around Shinkafi, 200 killed, 100 killed, 300 killed. And they gave us statistics of the number of orphans, number of widows, how much was paid over a period of time. Ransom. And it's not the government that give people money to pay ransom. No. It's people that sell their, le their meager resources. They cattle, they are everywhere. They sell. No government gives any family any penny to get their loved ones out. No. So the government came, this fresh government that came, they started dialoguing with them. Mm. We were in Gusau, Gusau was open. Gusau was open. The roads are open. We went to Shinkafi for a period of time, eight, nine months, there were no deaths. I am not in any way saying or minimizing the continuing death and carnages in some first state. Because in rural areas, there are still these deaths. So all I'm saying is that we have seen the benefit of, we have seen the benefit of dialogue. And dialogue is a way to go. You have seen the benefit of dialogue? Absolutely. We have. We saw wh that. Wh where's the benefit? In Zamfara? You've talked about past administrations no, dialoguing. No, we are, I'm you, telling you. You identified pre no, no. former President Lucia mm -hmm. Gobasanjo. Yeah. You identified former yeah. President yeah. Goodluck yeah. Jonathan. And in fact, I'd like to also make reference to your home state, Kasina, where the governor dialogued with bandits and offered amnesty, uh, per, uh, I think in his first term now. I'm not quite sure. I think so, in his first term. So where is the benefit Good. of dialogue that we can see in this references to history? I gave you a history. I gave you data in Zamfara. Zamfara Guso, curfew at 6 p.m. Now everybody is open, midnight. The roads were impassable after 6, 5, 7 p.m. You could, we drove through Zamfara. Uh, Have you forgotten that uh, some girls 
have just I'm been coming, I'm coming. That you, you see who uh, have just been released were you, kidnapped you need, you need, after this dialogue. How were they brought out? Military action? Dialogue. Dialogue. So dialogue is the key. How were the Chibo girls brought out? How were the Dapchi girls brought up? After how was Kankara brought up? But how where were the how bandits? Was, how was, how was are Kankara the bandits not up? still in the forest? <laughs> Will, are they not going to kidnap again tomorrow? I don't, that I don't know. But what I'm you're saying not, is you're that... Not, you're not perturbed <laughs> by the possibility yeah, that they yeah, could yeah, still yeah, kidnap yeah. tomorrow. Are you comfortable yeah. with the fact that they're still in the forest? How can I be comfortable, Bukola? You know you're not serious. So where is, the, where is the benefit the of dialogue? The benefit In Kassina, your home state, where amnesty was offered, in the recent past, they kidnapped the Kankara boys just last uh, year in December. Am I correct? So where is the benefit of that? Good, good. So what is the option? I want anybody to tell you me. You are what the commentator. No, I, I, I want anybody, anybody that thinks uh, dialogue is one of many pathways, right? We have seen, I've told you, I have seen firsthand the benefit of dialogue in Zamfara. Before the bloodshed around Shinkafi, 200, 150 around Shinkafi. Now it's quiet. People are kidnapped everywhere. We've seen that. People are being brought back. Y there has to be, and, and dialogues fail for reasons. They fail for reasons. One of the reasons is trust. Somebody reneged. More often than not, it's not the government, it's the bandits. But that should not deter you. That should make you stronger if you really believe in this. Stronger to continue to Absolute, dialogue. No, absolutely. To Absolute. continue to dialogue. Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, so the bandits should continue to thrive, no, you can prosper in the forest. You can and by the way, are you aware that the presidency acknowledged recently that state governors are paying ransom to uh, bandits and that uh, they should stop? The presidency was advising against it. Are you aware? All right. Well, is the presidency aware that people every day Family members every day pay up ransom to bandits all across the land. I have friends, I have family members that paid ransom. And I continue to pay ransom. We have thousands of our people kidnapped in all the forests in northern Nigeria. And it is families that dialogue to get their family members out. No government, local, state or federal gives them a penny. They sell their meager resources, whatever they have to get their loved ones out. So when a government tells me no dialogue, yet, yet, people are dialoguing to get their loved ones out mm. because the government so is not there. If a government is there, government will, 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 will do this for us. There is no gov governor you will go to if your loved one is kidnapped. None to help you. We have thousands of our people all across the forest, family members are dialoguing to get their loved ones out. This is the truth. So, it's so okay. for any governor it's to tell me, oh, no dialogue, no dialogue, guess what? It's, o it's okay for the bandits to continue to thrive, uh, prosper uh, in the forest. Bukala, do I look at like... At the mercy of uh, people in the, in, in, in the communities good. who are selling their property to good. pay ransom good. Uh, um, and, and are being impoverished. Good, and Nigerians... So that, that, that status quo is fine. Fine. Uh, Nigerians will vouch for me. That before as this program, as before the country continues before, to before this program, I have been the benefits of dialogue. No, it, it, the the country need, needed to have explored the benefit of dialogue. We don't need to explore dialogue is the best. It says in our in uh, in our religion was soul higher. Peace is better. Bloodshed, whichever way you can prevent bloodshed, that's the pathway to go. Hmm. That is the pathway to go and. While the no, armed criminals remain in the forest. I am not, I am not, uh, I'm not speaking for armed criminals or the military or the government or anybody. I'm speaking as a concerned citizen whose loved ones have been involved, whose friends have been involved, whose state has been involved. I am not speaking from the sky as an abstract person. I'm a very concerned citizen. That's why I got into this. Mm. And the reality is we're all together. Nobody is against any government or any organization. If we put all our heads together... We went to all these camps in the bandits, with bandits, all the five states. I they, ask again. They gathered. <laughs> as government continues to op or explore this option of dialogue as the best solution, you are not perturbed that the bandits remain 
in the forest. And there is another, yet another possibility that tomorrow they would kidnap again. Bukola, I went, when I went to that forest, I came out. 13, 14 year old, you want to cry. These are your children. These yeah. are your children. 13, 14 year old, carrying big guns, going to do this. Look at the children from Jangavi Primary School. Children taken into the forest, girls brought up. 10, 11, that, that's 12. not the answer to the Limping. question. Limping. No, no. Yeah. Let, let, me, let me tell you. I, so anybody, I, I anybody. I empathize with the scenario you're painting, but that's not the answer to the what question. What is the question? Are you, are you not perturbed by the possibility that the bandits will yet kidnap again tomorrow right, and, and as government continues to uh, explore that option of dialogue <laughs> that you believe to be the only solution? Yeah, and, and Bukala, you know that's a mischievous question. Mischievous because you know whatever right thinking Nigerian believe and want. Wants peace. Mm. Wants those criminals brought to book. Mm. Want our people able to go back to their villages and go back to their farms. Want this bloodshed to stop. Mm. Everybody. You know, so prof, for prof, you to ask prof, me prof, prof, I'd like I to accept <laughs> your unwilling <laughs> point of view or your reluctance <laughs> to state a categorical <laughs> point of view What's on some me, of the direct me, questions to this issue. Uh, let's make progress. Uh, a statement recently attributed to you says that the country lacks functional leadership at the moment, even when it is your kinsman, the president, that is. Uh, when did I say that? Uh, 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 you know. When did I say that? Holding sway right. uh, at the and top. And it doesn't matter. My kinsman, your kinsman. He's your kinsman. He's a Nigerian like you. A Nigeria like you. And I have never been shy. Never. Been shy about writing and speaking up about what I think about, about what's happening. And I've said it. I've written. Insecurity is nothing but a symptom of corruption and, and, and bad governance. Mm. It's the responsibility of a government to secure our people. This is not new. It's the responsibility of government to secure our people. Our people are not safe in their villages. Our children and so are you're dissatisfied with the way you would things are being handled, right? Jesus Christ. Bukola, if you know me, you know, you know whether I'm dissatisfied or not. If I'm satisfied, I won't be here. I'll be home sleeping. All is well. All is not well. Our people are not safe in their villages. They cannot go to the farm. They, these bandits put taxes on them. Our children cannot go to school. Many of the parents of these children from all these schools will never send them back to school. That's the end of their schooling. Many of these girls will be married early. They will give birth early. The babies die early. They will have VVF. They will be continuing poverty. Education in the north, where we have <coughs> challenges with education, has been set back. And how are schools being made safe? Hmm. So but, but Prof, many believe that the reason you have been visibly critical of President Muhammadu Buhari, I say again, your kinsman. Um, and I'm very proud of that. Mm, is because you are seeking at attention. From whom? Well, you respond to that uh, opinion expressed about your visibility. From whom? Attention from whom? If I'm seeking attention from the federal government, I won't criticize the federal government. Who am, I, who am I seeking attention from? I'm secure enough in my life. I'm secure enough not to seek any attention. Mm -hmm. And anybody who says that, I'm not going to dignify that. You know what I will do to them? I'll pray for them. But I be I, 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 they believe that you're supposed to be keeping a low profile following um, your exit from office. Why, the NHIS. why would I keep a low profile? So people, your people are being killed. Things are not going right. Or oh, you should go and sleep and be quiet. Correct? Is that what you expect me to do? This is my duty and responsibility as a citizen. And it's my right as a citizen to speak up if things are going wrong, especially when it affects me personally, security. No, they believe it's a slap on the face Who is following the, the way you handle uh, Aren't you reading Who is there? commentaries? I, you know why? I, I, I don't. Because they are, they, I'm, I don't dignify those. You know what I do for them? I pray for them and say, good Lord, forgive them, for they know not what they are talking okay, about. Okay, so tell us exactly what happened at the NHIS. What happened? I did my best. It's in my rear view mirror. I fought the good fight, which I'll fight again any time. Right? 
So if the NHIS is in my rear view mirror, I fought the good fight. But you were alleged to have flouted laws, broke protocols and financial regulation at the NHIS, accused of insubordination, continuous infighting with staff and management of the scheme. The controversial official was, uh, that's in reference to you now, sent on suspension twice within one year. Are you or were you guilty of these allegations while you were, we presided at the okay. NHIS? So uh, my being suspended two, three times, I wear that as a badge of honor. I wear that as a badge of honor. I refuse to do the wrong thing. Period. End of story. And if anybody has anything, anything, that I've done this, I've done this, I want to advise that person that he makes sure he can defend that in the court of law. But you haven't told us exactly what happened at the NHIS. How's the government? What happened in the NHIS, I fought the good fight. I fought corruption. I went there to do the right thing. You were the one accused of corruption oh, yeah, at the NHIS. Uh, this is the beauty of Nigeria. The thief will accuse you of being a thief. So you if know? you fought the good fight, <laughs> why did the president have to wield the big stick well, on as, you? As the president. And, 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 and the according president. to commentary, <laughs> the president was painstakingly slow in wielding the big stick on you while you were at the NHIS. So <laughs> for the president to wield the big stick on me, I wear that as a badge of honor. I fought the good fight. I fought corruption. And I challenge anyone that says, I'm this, I'm this, to take it to court or take it to, you know what my wife says? <laughs> my wife says, you've been suspended so many times that you are floating like an aeronaut. Right? So they say, and at the end of it, she said, oh, you know, she, she was making total, they said, oh, Sahara reporters and all the southwestern papers. At the end of it, they said, you stole 65 billion. She was making total. Today she will say, oh, 10 billion. Oh, tomorrow, 30 billion. Oh, tomorrow, 18 So billion. did you steal public money? <laughs> That's While the why. If I, if I steal public money, there's EFCC, there's ICPC, there is police, there is any, everybody in this world. They flip me, they do this, they take me to the house, they shake my pocket. That's not where I came. I left where I, where I came, where I was to come and serve this country. I'm grateful as it was. I will do it again. I served this country with all I got. And my purpose was not to steal at all. If I'm going to steal, you won't hear anything. Uh, and quiet. some say that you really were audacious, even while um, those accusations were leveled against you, uh, because after you had been handed an indefinite suspension in October 2018, rather than obey at the time, you stormed the office with 50 officers, broke a barricade mounted by angry workers and forced your way into office. Are all these Bukola, Bukola, you are really litigated, what has already been litigated. Where are you? You've, have you been asleep? This has been two, three years ago, I'll tell you. So. Whoever said he suspended me or they suspended me had no legal right to do that. End of story. None. You also challenged of your course. removal by the former minister. Yeah, at the yeah time. because yes, the former minister knows that. If he didn't know that, he knows that now. That no minister or no board has the right, the power to suspend or take disciplinary action against an appointee of the president. The person that appointed him will be the one that does that. Not the minister, not the distance. So they did what was illegal. End of story. And I wasn't going to, as the chief executive of the NHIS, going to sleep because the board took an, an illegal decision against me. Or the union were chanting, whoa, 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 whoa. I needed to show that I was in charge. And that I did. And I will do again. So there's so much indiscipline and rascality. Now all these unions continue to do that. And people arrogating themselves or, or organizations or institutions arrogating themselves to themselves powers they do not have. So if everybody is arrogating himself, the minister arrogated himself the power of the president. The board, the board arrogated itself the power of the president. 
that is in discipline and the union they are all connected I was there to do the right thing and that I did and I will do again so anybody telling me I do this I do this you don't know what I went through all this time so in spite of all you went through at the time you would not keep a low profile you'll be vocal in commenting on national issues absolutely because my are, right are you seeking another political appointment from whom from the current administration no i'm not even if i'm given i will not accept we print that tomorrow so we can if i wanted we can quote you on this absolutely tomorrow. write it put publish it if i wanted to be if i wanted to remain the es i would have kept quiet and continued as is but that's i refuse and i won't do that <laughs> end of story that's not me that's not my upbringing that's not how i bring up my children there is a lot more to life than crass accumulation of ill-gotten wealth. NHI's money, I said it before and I will say it again, is blood money. This is money meant for people to go to hospital. And over the years, is what they've been doing. I challenged the status quo and I did not have the support of the government to fight, to fight the right fight. And I'm glad I'm out. But I'm not seeking any position in this government. No, I'm not. Okay, just before we exit this <laughs> issue, are you emboldened in your continuing gale of criticism of the administration because you hail from the same place as the president? Unbelievable. Unbelievable. What kind of question is this? So you're saying because uh, you would expect, oh, if he's from my state, oh, I should keep quiet. You're saying I'm taking liberty because he's from my state. People did not know. I never seen the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria before I got this appointment. Never. Never set his on, uh, eyes on him. I never, nobody lobbied for me to get this job. Nobody. And I would criticize anybody in office because it's my right. I voted for this president twice because I believed he would do the right thing. If he's doing the wrong thing, it is my duty and responsibility. Citizen responsibility does not end in the ballot box. We participate, and that's why we're doing this. And I'm not doing this because I want any position. I don't want any position. The best position I want is on the day of judgment to be asked, did you do the right thing? That I did, and I'll continue to do. Mm. So I'm speaking because it's my responsibility as a citizen, and I see the bloodshed, and that's why we are there uh, and share gumi to see how we can play our part. So back to what brought us here, Prof which is the continuing insecurity in the northern part of the country. So, what will be the enduring solution? What will bring peace? Or, like the former chief of army staff said, is it going to take decades before um, insurgency, banditry, uh, become no longer fashionable? Yeah, and I talked about I talked about what the former chief of army staff said. He said, in a rise, he said, "Oh, this thing will go on for twenty years." And Femi Adeshina the other day on channel said, "Oh, even the Tamil Tigers of of, of Sri Lanka, it lasted twenty six years." I said, "Guys, we are not ready to wait that long. We want to end it now. Let's find a way to end it now. And how do we do it? Is the government and the people and everybody." Saying enough is enough. Boko Haram has been going on for 12 years. It's too long. The civil war, Nigerian civil war, lasted 30 months. We need to find a way to put an end to this. The legacy of President Muhammadu Buhari should be, he should live peace. That will be enduring legacy, not infrastructure. This is what we need. So peace is what we need, and everybody needs to come in. This band is listen to clerics. That's why I'm happy Gumi came, and that's why I, I'm asking every cleric in this country, all over the regions, to get involved. And I'm very proud uh, uh, Reverend Yakubu Palm got involved in the Southern Kaduna crisis. All clerics of all faith need to come in. All combatants listen to them more than they listen to government, more than they listen to anybody else. That is what they can do. But the legacy of President Muhammadu Buhari, the legacy that he should leave is peace. And he should do all that is possible without shedding more blood. Dialogue is one pathway to that. 
and you should encourage everybody to get involved. When I came out, this is my listen. I went, I saw, and I'm a, l a lot more hopeful today of peace. If we follow the pathway to dialogue, it's possible. And only us, nobody will drop from the sky to change this country for us. This country we call home. It is all of us that should get involved. And I'm doing it not because I want anybody's attention. I want God Almighty's attention. Thank you very much. And uh, you may have gotten it. We thank you very much, thank you. Professor Usman Yusuf, for thank your you. time. Thank and indeed for your liberty on the program today on Fireworks. We hope indeed that the administration um, leaves a legacy of peace. Well, that's hoping against hope. That's it on the program today. Thank you for watching. And uh, join us again, same time next week, we're going to bring you another edition. On behalf of the crew, I am Bukola Samuel Wemimo. Bye for now.